Hi and welcome back to a new video. My last video kind of exploded, so thank you all so much for the support and I hope you enjoy this channel. I personally have been on a CES deep dive in the past week and there's been a lot of tech announcements that had me really excited. I would like to share with the class on what has been going on amongst the RTX 50 series shenanigans. So here's your week in tech. Hmm. One of my favorite things that has come out of CES has to be the salt spoon. I love salty food and this spoon is supposed to make your food taste saltier without increasing the actual sodium amount, which to me sounds insane. It does so by sending a weak current from the tip of the spoon to your food while it is in your mouth. So the sodium molecules that are dispersed throughout the food travel outwards towards your tongue and therefore it tastes more salty when you actually eat what's on the spoon. Now it comes in four intensity levels and it is made by Japanese company Kirin and only available in Japan for now. Reviewers that have tried it have said that it is a little bit awkward to handle because you have to hold it almost like a toddler and it takes a little bit to actually function, but I personally am still really excited. I play League of Legends occasionally, so I am no stranger to salt and I kind of want to buy it. Let me know if you're interested in this kind of food modding. Speaking of CES, there is something that I personally have been missing from the CES coverage and it's Thunderbolt 5. We are yet to see it more commonly supported by laptops and the like. While in January of last year, a lot of commotion went round around Thunderbolt 5 and its capabilities, this time it's kind of nowhere to be found. PC World outlined the issue in one of their articles, but I quickly want to hit some key points here. Thunderbolt 5 was highly anticipated because of their larger data capabilities. In comparison to Thunderbolt 4, it doubles the GBPS, where Thunderbolt 4 supports two 4K displays on 60 Hz, Thunderbolt 5 would support up to three, or, and this is where the crux seems to be, two 8K displays. An exceptional functionality is something like eGPUs. Asus ROG released their XG Mobile 2025 on this year's CES, and that comes, strangely enough, with a Thunderbolt 5 connector. However, the laptops that are supposed to go with this eGPU don't. A main issue seems to be the non-existent integration into Intel's processors, but there's also word on lack of demand. 8K is mostly just an illusion for the average consumer, and DisplayLink and Thunderbolt 4 cover most of what is needed right now anyway. So we are looking at laptop, monitor, and cable manufacturers, and waiting for a first move from anyone, really. Staying in the realm of PC tech, everyone's favorite mad scientist released a new thermal paste with his company Thermal Grizzly. It's called Dornoud and the company claims that their specially engineered silicone oil is combined with microparticles of aluminum and zinc oxide nanoparticles of various shapes, which therefore increases longevity and stability. They say they minimize pump out effect and ensure excellent adhesion to surfaces, which results in extremely low thermal transfer resistance. In an internal comparison that I had exclusive access to, they compared Dornout to all of the current high performance thermal paste and it's looking very promising. I don't know about you, but I personally was really excited about the new spatula that comes with the product. It looks much more precise and pleasant for thermal paste applications. And I personally am really looking forward to see that in the shop on its own, cause I wanna stock up. Moving on, the Nintendo Switch 2 announcement got teased on the 16th. The highly anticipated console remodel seems to be less wild than maybe hoped by some. The new console is a bit sleeker, less colorful, and has new grip attachments. Looking at these, 
I personally think these guys are going to be a very fast point of failure looking at the possible wear and tear of the PCB and the fact that people might just be so used to clicking their Joy-Cons in that I'm a little bit worried about this connection type, but we're going to be seeing how it works out. The Switch 2 comes with one more additional USB-C slot and there is lots and lots of speculation out there on what that might be for. from from just additional periphery or different loading options to an entire second monitor that might be something Nintendo is thinking about. But all of that is speculation, so let's wait and see. For now, only Nintendo knows its true use. Additionally, there are some rumors on the new grips having a gliding mouse-like function where you can move them across your desk like you would with a computer mouse. Both native Switch grips seem to have some sort of laser at the bottom, and there's this bit in the presentation that seems to hint at such a functionality. On the hardware side of things, nothing, and I repeat, nothing has been confirmed yet. However, there have been some leaks that seem to be very true, and based on those, the Nintendo Switch 2 seems to come with the performance of a PS5 or an Xbox One, comparable to the RTX 30 series, which I personally am a little bit worried about what that means for FPS glitches, stutters, and general choking of the new console. Now, I will say, Nintendo is very good at getting games out that are optimized for their set of hardware, so that is something they've been decent with, but for the price tag of around 500 USD, I feel like maybe we could have expected a little bit more. So we are going to be seeing how this works out. Once again, it's all based on leaks and rumors, so nothing is confirmed here yet. And I like to stay on the more suspicious side. Speaking of confirmation, in their trailer, Nintendo announced backwards capability for both physical and online games, which I'm very happy about. It was also announced with what seems to be a new Mario Kart. More details are to be shared in a Nintendo Direct on the 2nd of April. Let's hope that this time the leaks don't get there before Nintendo can. Another really cool thing are these power cells. They can be used in doors. The Swedish company Exeger created a new material for solar cells called Powerfoil. Now, some of you might know them from CS 2024, but with CS 2025 shining a new light on them, I feel like I would be amiss not to do so as well, because I think their technology is really cool. They come with a range of application ideas and charge on artificial light. Yes, you heard right, they don't need the sun. Whether it's low light or bright light scenarios, they are built so you won't ever have to charge things like your wireless headsets ever again. They also work great to remove stuff like batteries from your remote controls or other everyday objects. This is done by using a DSSC power cell. This stands for dye sensitized solar cells and they use a titanium dioxide layer that is covered with light absorbing dye. Once the light hits that dye, it releases electrons into the titanium dioxide generating an electric current. These electrons travel through the circuit and refresh the dye to sustain the process. This technology had its breakthrough in the 90s, but Powerfoil is a new material that has a thousand times lower resistance and therefore better conductivity compared to the standard glass cells. A big part is also that you don't have to cover the Powerfoil material with any protective layers like you have to do with the glass cells. It is highly customizable in texture. You can print buttons under it and use it as such. And I think it's a tech we will see much more in our everyday objects in the future. And I'm really, really excited for it. On top of that, Exeger produces with 100% renewable energies, produces no toxic emissions. The solar cells themselves are not made with any toxic materials at all and they are recyclable which i think in this whole solar cell conversation is a really really important thing lastly i want to give a quick beat on nvidia partner cards of the rtx 50 series as most of them have been announced 
I really recommend watching Gamers Nexus's video on the full breakdown of these cards, but my biggest takeaway here is once again that no one in tech knows how to build a brand identity, as the naming schemes are once more all over the place. The biggest L has to go to Asus ROG. The Strix was one of the names that was consistent over the last generations of cards, and now it has been demoted for no reason at all. The new Strix will only be Asus's 5070 cards, whereas the high-end versions are now called Astral for the 4-pan version and Astral LC for the, you guessed it, water-cooled version. Additionally, there's been a lot of yapping on marketing words for design and components, not to look at anyone specifically. And of course, the real details will only come once we can compare and test these cards. I personally don't know which one I'm gonna be trying to get, but having a quick glance between the RTX 40 and 50 series, I feel like nearly everyone has turned away from putting these little monitors everywhere, which I'm not so sure how to feel about. I like having a little bit of customizability, and it's no surprise that, at least aesthetically, my favorite card is the Gigabyte Master Ice. It comes in white and has Hawk fans. As Steve from Gamers Nexus pointed out, the Gigabyte description can't differentiate between Hawks and Eagles. As a resident bird fan, I'm of course happy to help here. This is a Hawk. And this is an eagle. Now let me know which of the two the fans are like, because clearly that matters here, right? Additionally, the Master Ice also has that little monitor to showcase animations on, and it's GIF, not GIF. Well, that's been everything for this week from me. I hope you enjoyed this little breakdown. Let me know down below if there was anything I missed or anything you heard about. Let's exchange some thoughts. And if you just wanna help out the algorithm, then maybe post this emoji in the comments down below. You'd really help me. And of course, if you like this video, consider leaving a thumbs up or a subscription as that helps my channel tremendously. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Nee na 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 nee no na 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 no na na na